Hello and good morning, and today we're going to make a Victorian needle case. This was my original inspiration for the needle case. This is the front of the needle case. It has some beadwork in it. I'm doing a different pattern in the middle, so I chose not to do the beadwork, but that is a very viable option. And this is the back of the needle case. So those are the lady's initials. I opted to do my first name, or my uh, character's first name. And the reason I chose to do that is because my character was married in the middle of my um, time span that I do. And so it's easier for me to just do her name as opposed to having two needle cases that I have to keep up with. Which one do I use because I'm now married. Hello, it is editing Caitlin, who realized that filming Caitlin forgot to film what you need for this project. So, here you are. This is perforated paper. It's I got it from Amazon, actually. And it's just paper with these tiny little holes um, through it, and you're going to do your cross stitch on that, basically. Um, this is the one I already used. So you don't need very much, just a couple of inches. And so you can make several need needle cases with this. Um, and the package I got from Amazon had two packages with it. So yeah, it's 14 gauge if I didn't mention that before. Which just ha means how many holes there are per inch. Sorry, I'm filming this late at night so the shadows are going to be weird. You're also going to need some silk. Um, or possibly some silk ribbon that's wide enough. Like 3 to 4 inches wide silk ribbon. I use regular silk. You're only going to need a scrap of it. So just whatever you have left over from your other projects will work for this. Then you shall need some silk ribbon. Uh, I use inch wide ribbon. Don't do what I did. I didn't know what I was doing. Use half inch ribbon. That's what you're going to need. Um, I used 45 inches of it. So I used uh, 25 to make the bow on top and then two 10 inch pieces for the bows um, to tie it closed. So if that helps anyone. This ribbon happens to be from Dharma Trading and I just dyed it myself to match another project, so it was left over. So I really didn't, didn't have to put too much effort into that. You're also going to need um, thread and a needle to uh, which the thread should, should match your silk, basically. So yes, this is cotton thread. I think I got it from Walmart. And then you're going to need something to do your embroidery with. Um, this is Cruel Wool um, from Appleton's. Uh, it's something I usually use for Berlin wool work. And it's kind of like yarn, but it's much finer, much thinner. And it is made of wool. I think you can also use silk embroidery floss, but I would suggest um, Cruel Wool. And I found, I find a lot of it, you can find it anywhere. Um, eBay and Etsy have quite a few sellers who sell this type of thing. So. Yes, that is basically what you need to make this project if you're making your own needle book. So the needle case we're going to make today shows up all across the 19th century. I've seen it as early, or similar examples as early as 1820, and I've seen them all the way up till 1899. So um, this is a very versatile project to make for any um, era that you're doing. Um, Hopefully the embroidery turns out well. I used to be very good at embroidery, but that's one of those skills that if you don't practice it often, it kind of deteriorates. And so, suppose it turns out really horribly. I can pretend it's my little sister who gave it to me. Wait, how old would Martha be in 1860? Let's see, Nettie was, Nettie was 20 in 1860 because she was born in 1840. That means that Eliza was 18. Leonard 16, John 15, okay, and Maddie 13. So yeah, she's probably doing pretty good embroidery by this point, so can't blame that on her. And my nieces and nephews, my niece would have just been, no, she would have been born in 61, so she wouldn't be old enough to hold a needle. Darn it, can't blame it on any of them. Well, it is cross-stitch, and cross-stitch is fairly difficult to mess up. So, hopefully this will turn out well. <laughs> so what I think what I'm going to do first is, I'm not, because I haven't made this up before. I was up till like 1 o'clock last night, or in the morning last night, um, 
like making the pattern <laughs> and so I've done the math I'd have 14 point paper which means there's 14 holes per inch theoretically it should be around four inches by two and a half inches um, when done but I don't want to waste any, any of this paper because it is kind of expensive and I don't want to cut it too short because that would even be more wasteful so I think I shall do the embroidery of the outline first and then cut it out and then do the rest of the embroidery. So I think that's what my first plan is going to do. I'm going to do the outline first just to make sure that I have enough of the paper. Okay, the edges are done. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut in the middle of a circle, just the next one from the embroidery. I left one in between the two. I'm going to cut right down the middle. I have two completed pieces. This is a front and a back. I'm going to use a little bit of this because on the pattern, it's not really showing the pattern too well, but these actually have a bit, just a little square of excess that's not then embroidered on there. And so it kind of gives a raised appearance. You see this a lot with perforated paperwork in the um, mid century. So I'm going to need four, actually, eight going to need eight little squares that are three by three so I should go ahead and cut that, those out as well so now I have all my pieces cut out I have <clears throat> two outside pieces and eight little squares to go in the corners so what I'm going to do now I'm not going to do all these yet I'm going to go ahead and do all the central embroidery and I will do this last Okay, the embroidery is done so oh my goodness sorry thunderstorms showing up so we have some thunder happening um, I decided not to do the acorn here because I had wanted to do the squirrel in brown but I did not have any brown that um, wasn't like a reddish tint and it didn't look good with the red I already had so I opted not to do the acorn here and to do the squirrel in um, gray instead Otherwise, I followed it pretty faithfully, and um, yeah, the backs look pretty good, so you should see, you should be able to tell what the design is on the back. It shouldn't be all over the place. I um, didn't do a fantastic job, like there's, I did some jumping around, but um, it's a back that's about to get covered up, so, you know. So we're going to take our silk, and I probably should have ironed this beforehand, but it's not going to be that big of a deal, and what we're going to do is we're going to just cut... Um, just, I'm going to do it on this side because this side is, like, okay. I'm going to cut just a little bit, I'm basically going to cut the shape out with a little bit of a seam allowance. Good. I can see it. It doesn't matter if it's even because we're going to iron it up. I'm going to iron these two pieces um, in, for, in, and then essentially it's going to be a silk backing to this, and then we're going to stitch it all the way around. 
So I'm going to go ahead and iron it and I'll see you back in a moment. So I have those ironed and they fit the embroidered parts fairly well. I went ahead and cut some ribbon for this. Now I'm using inch wide ribbon left over from another project. Ideally you would have half an inch wide ribbon. Um, but yeah, we're going to use what I got. I dovetailed the end ends and then um, these are exactly four inches wide or slightly less than four inches wide and I knew I wanted a 10 inch tail on either end to um, tie a bow. So I went ahead and cut it, cut it 28 inches. Yours might differ based on the size of your card and uh, what type of ribbon and how big of a bow you want. So my next step is I'm going to start a blanket stitch to attach this. I'm going to start with the front. And you don't want to tie a knot when you're embroidering because it just creates a bulk. So I'm just going to run it through some of the other stitches to kind of anchor this a little bit. Um, another thing when you're doing the embroidery, if you're doing this project, um, we're doing a cross stitch like this, all your stitches should go in the same direction. So if you start on the left one stitch and then do right, they should all be the same way. You don't want it, it, it looks off and um, you know, it doesn't look good whenever you switch, switch constantly. Um, and it does take, change the um, appearance of a stitch when you do the left first or the right first. So just make sure you're doing your stitches evenly. And I'm going to start on this corner. I'm not going to do the top edge. I'm going to go around this way. And a blanket stitch. We're going to do it in each one of these little holes. Just going to line that up. I'm going to put it the needle through this first one. And essentially what you're doing is you're going to put your stitch your needle through this next hole all the way through the silk, kind of wrap that around and do that. And you're just going to keep doing that. So it's almost like a buttonhole stitch and I have it turned where, where y'all can't probably see that. And so that's what's going to attach our silk to the card. So I'm going to keep doing this all the way around. And I will see you when I come back to the top. So I'm not going to do the top yet. Okay, so now I have at least the edges sewn um, just around cross, and I just left the, the thread hanging so I can do the top in a moment. I did the same for the back. Um, if you didn't want to do the blanket stitch, that was too confusing. Um, a, I did not do a very good job explaining that. So you can also go on YouTube or um, just online and search how to do a blanket stitch or you can probably just back stitch and that would give you the same result. All you're doing is trying to attach the silk to the perforated paper. Um, so I think um, this is kind of where it gets to speculation is I'm not sure how exactly to do this because I've never actually observed an original in real life. Um, so I'm just going off of pictures here but I think what I want to do next is work with the felt. And so I'm going to make a booklet with four different folds for needles and pens. And so what I think I'm going to do first, would that work? More or less, okay. Should it be this way? I'm going to cut two pieces, but I'm gonna fold them, so I want it to be twice as big as this. More or less. And I'm gonna cut this down in a moment, so. I'm going to go ahead and do it right on the edge. I did not pick the good scissors for this. Okay. Don't suppose this is wide enough. Nope. Okay. So let's work this in now. So basically it's going to be a little booklet of four pieces just like this to hold all my needles. Um, so I think the next step 
is you need to finish these edges. They were rarely left raw. So one way to do that is you could cut it quite a bit smaller because you don't want it poking out from here. You want it soggy in the inside. Um, and you could blink it stitch around. But I did see one that had scalloped edges, and I have a scalloper. And so I think I'm going to do that for mine and save me a little bit of time of embroidering. embroidering. Um, I've also seen them very heavily embroidered in here and like designed. And yeah, you get to be really creative with how you do the felt. I'm going to leave it plain except for the scalloped border. So I should go grab my scalloper, and I'm going to work on that. Okay, so I like that a lot better. Um, I think that's really cute. So I'm going to take one of these, and I still have my needle attached to this. And then I'm going to take my ribbon. And again, this is all speculation about how I think it would have worked. Um, because I've not actually seen an original. Of course, I don't have my pins with me. But essentially, I'm going to go through all of these layers to attach them. So this is the back one. So I'm going to do just what I did, which is... A blanket stitch, and I'm going to go all the way across, get catching the the um, felt and the ribbon as well, trying to push that felt just a little bit further down so I just see the ribbon instead of the felt sticking out because I don't want to see that felt. And I'm going to do that with both. Um, sides, except, well actually I'm going to do the side and I'll get back to y'all in just a moment. Okay, so that is attached, and so it's just a little sandwich of back, I guess y'all can't see that, back, two layers of um, felt, and the ribbon which is kind of hanging off. Okay, so what I think we're going to do now is attach the other fold, so I'm just going to put this there and probably stitch them together on the insides just kind of right here together and not not grab the silk just grab and attach the felt and I'm just doing this with a quick running stitch Hoping that I'm not grabbing anything important. I guess I could have done this before I start stitching it to the red, and that probably would have been easier. But since I've not done this before, I didn't think about that. Okay, so now I have, yeah that worked. So now I have four bits of felt, the back and the ribbon. So what I'm going to do now is attach the front. And I'm going to do kind of the same way. I'm going to try to grab this bit of felt, just this side, and the ribbon, and close it all the way across. Okay, so that is basically done. So I have my little needle book, and there's where it's attached, the back, and all my little pages where my needles will go. And so now I'm going to take this and tie this in a bow. I should probably do it with the front facing me since I'm the one tying. Possibly. Maybe the bow's going to face that way. That's fine. Whatever you want, ribbon. That's fine. Yes, there's my little needle book. So, one wing also, and I might go ahead and do it. Put another ribbon here and here to t keep it closed. And so I think that's what I'm going to do next. I might cut, because this made a very nice bow, so I might cut another um, two 10-inch strips. Okay, so I attached the ties. I just stitched it right in here and then on the bottom as well. And so now I can close it. Actually, first what I might want to do is go ahead and fill it before I close it. 
So I think I'm going to just start off with my sharps. I have two tiny little needles. I'm just going to weave them in. And the weather's starting to get really bad. And the dog does not like thunder, so he's over here super stressed right now. Put my everyday needles. pins in the back. All right. And so let's tie her up. I think it turned out stinking cute. Look at that. I love it. There's the name on the back. Hello, sweetheart. Yeah, so that was a really fun project. It was super easy. Took, you know, even with the embroidery and such, it probably took just a little bit. You cannot touch the, the camera, baby. Come here. It probably took an afternoon. I and mean, I, yeah, I didn't start till almost 11 this morning. It's you know, five now, so it really wasn't that big of a project. Um, but yes, it's so adorable. I absolutely love it. Yeah, so hopefully someone out there will make their own needle book now um, that you can use. And again, it's use, good for all sorts of time periods. Um, I'm probably going to make several. Keep one in like my 1830s bag. Um, I have a sewing kit. I have a sewing bag where I need to make a sewing bag for 1830s and 1840s. I need to make another one for my 1860s stuff. Might have to make one with a peacock on it for Leando, um, because we have a lovely sewing chest that I think just needs to be filled. And then this one will go, go in my toiletry case because I made it to match with all the red. Um, but yes, thank you so much for joining me. I certainly hoped or hope that this was helpful and that. Um, you got something out of it, and hopefully this will inspire you to make your own needle case.